Hello, and thank you for joining me on this episode of My Council Comment. I'm Whitney Elliott Baxter, 9th District Council Member, and today I am joined by our Director of Emergency Management, Rob Larkin. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, good morning, Council Member. How are you, ma'am? I'm doing very well, awesome. thank you. Yeah. So today we are here in the Emergency Operations Center, which is kind of our... Um, brains of emergencies that happen yes. in Lexington it's where our, everybody gathers. It's so our I mean, coordination center for, thank you. for public safety and all the emergency support functions. So it's really important in times of uh, emergency at citywide um, that everybody from different um, public safety organizations within the government and all of our utility companies, we all come together here so that everybody's on the same page in response to emergencies. So um, you can kind of see some of the screens behind us that give us more information as we process emergencies in the city. Um, but today we are here to talk about winter preparedness tips. and. There's a little bit of a nip in the air today, so it's timely that we're talking about winter preparedness it, tips. It is pretty timely. You know, it, it's winter time in Kentucky, and if you don't like the weather right now, just wait five it, minutes. Wait five minutes. <laughs> yeah. give, it, give it a day or two. Yeah. Uh, but you know, during uh, during the winter months, we we'll look at December and January and February. That's when we get a lot of fires. Uh, and because of Christmas and decorations and travel and all the other kind of things we do, it kind of increases the probability of something like that could happen. So I know a lot of people um, use chimneys and kerosene heaters and things like that to stay warm in the winter months. So could you tell us a little bit about some safety tips um, as far as heating is concerned? Well, if you do have a wood burning stove or uh, a wood burning fireplace, make sure your, your chimney is, is clean and it's been inspected. Uh, U.S. Fire Administration says about 77% of heating fires are associated with chimneys wow. uh, for that type of thing. Uh, so make sure it's clean, that type of thing. Um, also, as far as Christmas decorations and, and that type of thing, burning candles, everybody likes to do it. Mm -hmm. They smell good and, you know, they, they add to the ambiance. But those are about half the home fires uh, during the winter months. Oh, wow. Uh, so, as far as indoor and not for heating, so those are some 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 of the basic tips. Uh, I'd also provide to you that if you could change your filters, make sure that you've done so, and if you can, uh, have your heating system checked, your HVAC okay. system checked, to make sure that it's running optimally. Maybe you can save you a little bit of money. So you mentioned um, like holiday lights and things like that, and I know people use a lot of extension cords in the winter months, so. What, what kind of tips could you give us as far as extension cords and electrical safety? So obviously for your extension cords and that type of thing, if you're going to use it outdoor, make sure that you have an outdoor approved extension cord. Okay. Indoor, use an indoor approved extension cord. And the big thing is don't overload the circuits because that is where we could have a lot of electrical problems. And also with winter, understand with ice storms that could happen, snowstorms, that, that type of thing. Always remember, never touch a, a down power line. Stay away from them. And understand that, you might understand that that is not an electric line. It could be a telecom line or a cable line, that, that type of thing. Just remember that it could be energized from a down power line on down the line that you can't see. And I would also extend that out to, to fences around the back of your house. And I know here in Lexington, a lot of places still have the old chain link fences mm -hmm. and that type of thing. They can be energized. And those power lines a lot of times run at the back back of uh, properties. I never thought of that. That's a, real, that's a really good tip. It can um, be shocking. <laughs> it can be shocking. That's very true. Um, so I know that uh, water becomes a big issue in winter months as well. Um, I'm a realtor as well, so I always like to tell my clients, make sure that your water lines, your hoses are disconnected in the Absolutely. in the winter months. We have to, um, we have to re remind firefighters about that too. <laughs> I haven't done that for a long time. I haven't done that for a long time. So what other tips can you give um, our residents as far as water's concerned? So uh, I think first and foremost, you captured a great one. Disconnect your hoses uh, if uh, to your external spigots and that type of thing. If the temperature is going to go below zero, uh, absolutely open up your cabinets, leave the water dripping and, and that type of thing. Uh, if you're going to leave the, the, your house for the holidays, uh, this will also save you a little bit of money. Drop the temperature down of, of your thermostat to nothing less than 55 degrees so that ambient temperature within the house uh, still stays good. And then insulate where you can, 
they make uh, external strips of, that you can wrap uh, to help problem spigots and, and problem pipes from uh, freezing and bursting because that is a huge, huge expense, That's the damage expense. that can be caused. Yeah. So I know a lot of people do traveling um, throughout the holiday season and the winter months, um, especially with um, kids out of school and things like that. Yeah. So what are some tips that you can give um, our residents that are traveling and vehicular safety? So, so obviously make sure that uh, your car's in good running order, uh, that you've got good tread on the tires. Uh, that's, that's one of the greatest things. Um, even if you're gonna go across town or that type of thing, make sure you've got some warm clothes mm -hmm. in case you should become stuck uh, or you know something of that nature could happen to you. I know a couple of years ago when we had the uh, we had a, a sudden snowfall and a lot of mm -hmm. people got locked up on, on the interstate we found people didn't have food they were running low on fuel so always keep your tank above half uh, half, half a tank of fuel. Um, they were having medical problems uh, they did not have sufficient clothes uh, to keep them warm okay. uh, just they were relying on, on heat and good weather and it didn't happen that day. So all those things, have an emergency kit for your car, uh, make sure you've got a flashlight, not just for your car, but obviously for, uh, for your home and that type of thing that works and keep everything charged up. Those are all really important tips. So um, I know that we have a really great website and an alert system in Lexington where our residents can stay informed. Can you talk a little bit more about our BeReadyLexington.com website? Well, I mean, so so be ready, be ready .com, uh, It essentially will provide you links to other information and things that, that we post as well. So anything that you don't catch in this in this interview, go out there and take a look at it and kind of see what it's got to offer. It also provides links to to other places uh, that can provide even more in depth information. Okay. Just about anything you, you want to learn. And then, of course, you know, we have a social media presence. It's on Facebook, Instagram. Instagram. So if we get information that is, that is pertinent about an emergency or, or we see something on the horizon coming, then we can obviously, we will post, we will post to that and try to keep people informed because that is one of emergency management's key things is to inform, alert, and warn. Um, and then Lex Alerts, that's a, a free service. That's essentially where we can actually text you information or call in, in the event of, of a large scale type emergency. And we I'm, encourage everybody to do that. I have, I'm signed up for those alerts and they're very helpful. That's so good, we need is. a lot more people to sign up. So. We do, that's a great way for everybody to stay informed on uh, specific emergencies that may be happening and notifications in the city. So um, I know that we, uh, last winter we had a, a fairly significant power outage and that left a lot of people in the dark, <laughs> uh, literally, um, but they had to turn to old school radio. Um, that was a way that people were trying to stay in contact um, or, or find out more information about closures and things like that. Um, remind me again what our our radio station is. AM 1620. AM 1620. Mm -hmm. And we, I mean, generally there might be some music and just some general information on the, there on day to day. But when things change, we can obviously change that pretty rapidly and provide that information on AM sixteen twenty. Uh, you brought up the uh, you brought up the uh, the power outage. A, a couple other things that just from my fireside and that type of thing, years of experience. If you're going to operate a generator during a power outage, make sure that it's at least twenty feet away from your house uh, because of the carbon monoxide. Always uh, maintain, especially when people use the alternate heat and that type of thing, make sure that your smoke detectors are functioning. If you didn't change your batteries back when the time changed, uh, now is a good time as any. Uh, and then have a carbon monoxide detector if you have gas appliances uh, anywhere in your home. Uh, that's just some, some key things uh, that, that everybody should know. And I think it's really important that everybody makes sure that they're um, watching our local news stations to keep up to date and alert of what is happening um, and, and any other trusted weather sources that you like to use. I like to use the Weather Channel. Some people like other things. Some people like NOAA. Just, some people like the National Weather Service. And, yeah. and we monitor it all here. And I think our local meteorologists do a really good job of keeping us up to date on what's coming our way. Um, but Lex Alerts is still a really great way to stay um, in touch as, far as, as well as our BeReadyLexington.com. So I 
thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, and my absolute pleasure. Yeah. This is my first interview oh, as good. emergency management director, so well, I, I appreciate the opportunity. I'm honored to be with you today. I, I'm honored to be where I am right now. <laughs> and thank you all for joining me as well on this episode of my council comment. I hope you found this information helpful. And I just want to encourage you all to sign up at BeReadyLexington.com and follow me on all my social media accounts, uh, Facebook and Instagram, and to email me if you're interested in uh, receiving my weekly newsletter. Um, that wraps it up for today. Thanks again for joining me.